In this video, I'd like to talk about what a lot of people think of as entrapment, specifically entrapment by the police, and whether or not that amounts to any specific legal defence. I'm motivated to talk about this because of an article I read this morning, ironically, where unmarked police speed vans have been spotted trying to catch people speeding. Now, there's one simple answer to all this, which is don't speed. But many people take issue with the fact that police drive around in unmarked vehicles catching people speeding. And in fact, there's one such case story about this. So I'll tell you this before we get into the case law itself. So one such story is that a driver was driving through Newtown in Birmingham. Uh, those of you that are familiar with Birmingham will be familiar with Newtown and what it might be like to drive through there at one or two o'clock in the morning, which is when this driver was driving through. This driver was being followed by a very dark BMW. Couldn't really tell whether it was dark blue or black, but the driver just knew it was a dark in color, driving through Newtown and became fearful for their safety. The vehicle was literally two or three feet from the rear of the vehicle and the driver moved over to the left to allow the BMW to overtake, but it didn't. The BMW followed behind and stayed behind. Then the vehicle moved back into the middle lane and the BMW followed. So this BMW was essentially snaking this vehicle all the way through Newtown and then through uh, the lights. And in doing so, the driver exceeded the speed limit by just two or three miles an hour, but over a stretch of about half a mile. As you guessed, it turned out to be an unmarked police vehicle and they pulled this driver over and invited them to sit in the back of the police vehicle. At which point the police showed the video of the driver driving two or three miles an hour over the speed limit all the way through Newtown, about half a mile, three quarters of a mile or so, and invited them to comment. The driver said they felt fearful for their safety and therefore wanted to maintain the distance between the two vehicles. The police fairly ironically said that if they felt fearful for their safety, they should have pulled over to the side of the road and called the police. But of course, they didn't want to do that because it was Newtown. Newtown is notoriously connected to various parts of Birmingham and has a notorious crime rate, or at least it did at the time. So instead, the vehicle just carried on and tried to maintain the distance but ultimately the police pulled them over for doing two or three miles an hour over the speed limit. The driver could have taken this to court and argued whether the police were abusing their process and all of this sort of stuff, but ultimately they just took the three points and this came out as a bit of advice among other things later. Now the story that hit the news a couple of days ago is that Northamptonshire police have rolled out a mobile enforcement fleet of unmarked vehicles, primarily targeting excessive speed and people using mobile phones. So you remember the video that I did with somebody using the mobile phone just recently and how dangerous that can be. Quite a significant number of road uh, collisions and fatalities are caused by a combination of speed and mobile phone use and things of that nature. So it's only right in the sense that there is a stamp out of speeding and uh, illegitimate use of mobile phones whilst driving. In fact, thank you to the commenter that said uh, they do many, many miles every year and they are very often on the phone, but they do use hand free devices, but still think that that should be banned as well because it does take the attention away from the road. Uh, I'm of the same mindset. I do think that even if you're on a hands free device, you are distracted from the road and ideally you shouldn't be using the phone at all. Although if you are, it is currently legal to be doing that with a hands-free device. So Northamptonshire uh, police are rolling out this fleet of vehicles. Undoubtedly, uh, some people are going to complain to say that that is some form of entrapment. Now, there is no specific defence of entrapment in the UK, in England and Wales. The case that established that there is no defence of entrapment per se in English law is Crown and Sang in 1980. This was primarily because the act of entrapment or any alleged act of entrapment by police or whomever does not take away the intent of the person who is ultimately found guilty be just because they were in, in some form of entrapment in that process. They've still carried out the criminal offence and they've still had the intent of doing so. So in this sense, the entrapment has ultimately served a purpose in that the prohibited act has been 
uh, observed and prohibited, and it is ultimately just the circumstances surrounding the guilty act. Although it can be used as mitigation in sentencing, so if police are pushing somebody and encouraging somebody to carry out or attempt to carry out some criminal offence, this can be used as mitigation. However, that's not the end of the matter, and with law it rarely is. There is a segue from entrapment in and of itself into what we would refer to as an abuse of process. And this ties very neatly with the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984, specifically the court's discretion under Section 78 to exclude evidence from a trial on the grounds that it might be unfair or have an adverse effect on the proceedings. And there's one such case that revolves around the abuse of process, which is very similar to entrapment, which can be used in cases where you would otherwise argue that it was entrapment, and which might be encouraged in the story, such as the one I told you with the driver being pushed by the BMW, which turned out to be an unmarked police car. So if that driver had gone to court and argued that this was an abuse of process, which is akin to entrapment, but remember entrapment itself is, is not a defence, but potentially an abuse of process because the vehicle itself, the police vehicle, was driving far too close allegedly to uh, this driver's vehicle. That could be seen to be an abuse of process and therefore potentially under PACE, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, could potentially be excluded as unfair evidence on the basis that it was unfair or have an adverse effect on the proceedings under Section 78. Uh, law students will be familiar with uh, Section 78 exclusions. Um, there are various ways of making that application. So the case that really revolves around uh, entrapment and the discussion of the abuse of power, which is akin to entrapment, is the case of Crown and uh, Loosely of 2001. Uh, this was where police had gained evidence from entrapment activity. This case set out essentially what the court must consider when deciding whether or not proceedings against the defendant should be stayed, stayed, put on hold because of certain factors. And those factors include, did the police act in good faith? Were the police acting in genuine good faith at that time? Using the example that I've given you with the uh, dark BMW, it could be readily argued that the police were not acting in good faith because they were driving so close to the driver vehicle, therefore intimidating somewhat because it was a dark unmarked vehicle late at light, early hours of the morning through a notorious part of Birmingham and the driver quite understandably felt threatened. So that could be fairly readily argued as an abusive process that the police were not acting in good faith in that, it, again, it could be argued that they were pushing this vehicle to exceed the speed limit, only to then fine them for exceeding the speed limit. The second part of this test was whether the police had a good reason to suspect the accused of criminal activity. Now, if you were to compare, let's say, someone in the street who was looking like they're about to deal drugs as against this driver in my story here, who very arguably was not speeding beforehand, but might well have been pushed to be speeding by the police and compare that with the drug dealer on the street. If the police go up and pretend to be a customer and entice them into the drug dealing, then that activity was already there. So one of the elements of this test is whether the police had good reason to suspect criminal activities or criminal intent. And so in the case of the drug dealer on the street, quite clearly, there's uh, more likely to be evidence of intent and criminal activity going on there as against the driver example that I gave you. So again, very arguably, the driver was not speeding, not doing anything wrong until this vehicle came up behind and then, then only they exceeded the speed limit. So in this case, again, on the second limb of this test, the driver scenario would chalk it up to be an abusive process in that there probably wasn't arguably any good reason to suspect that driver of any criminal activity. Only when they were being pushed by this other vehicle, they ended up exceeding the speed limit. The third element of this test is whether or not the police suspect that crime was prevalent in the area in which this investigation was taking place. Now again, 
comparing the driver and the drug dealer and that sort of thing if we take the driver out of that situation uh, to an area that is known for racing because there are certain areas that are known uh, for racing around vehicles the police may readily suspect drivers of racing and driving at excessive speeds in those areas but in this particular area it's not arguably the case but again comparing with the drug dealer on the street there are certain areas that are known for that kind of activity so on this limb of the test you can again see a differentiation between the drug dealer on the street and the driver going through Newtown so the area where this is a prevalent criminal activity this limb of the test would be easily satisfied the police suspect that it is a prevalent area and that investigation going on in that area is likely to discover criminal activity um, the last two limbs of this test firstly whether or not the techniques of investigation used by the police uh, were necessary to the level of secrecy in comparison with the difficulty of the detection of the criminal activity in question and all that means is if police turned up in bright clothing the drug dealers on the street are quite clearly going to just disappear just as the area notorious for racing and uh, racing cars and racing vehicles around if, if police turn up they are just going to disappear and they're not going to race or they're much less likely to race whereas if the police turn up in unmarked clothing and carry out some kind of sting and operation like that then clearly the need for secrecy in those situations is much more justified. So this limb of the test, whether or not the investigatory techniques require that level of secrecy can be justified. And then finally, the nature of the offence and the defendant's circumstances and vulnerability. So again, nature of the offence and vulnerability in the circumstances, comparing the drug dealer on the street as against the driver who is driving through Newtown. Now, this driver was not doing anything else wrong, ostensibly, and arguably felt vulnerable because it was that part of town with the vehicle driving up closely behind them. Now, it's arguable that the driver felt vulnerable and feared for their safety, and due to all those circumstances, the nature of the offence, well, it was relatively minor. It was two or three miles an hour over the speed limit in a very quiet area because it was the early hours of the morning. Not to say that it's correct to speed. Of course, it isn't. But that is far less an offence than drug dealing, as my other example. So in the circumstances and the vulnerability, uh, those are not really arguable in the case of the drug dealer on the street. And the nature of the offence is far more serious and therefore the level of secrecy used can be far more easily justified for the police to carry out a covert operation in that situation. So that's the final limb of the test as to what the nature of that offence was. So as it again while I say there's no specific defence of entrapment but there can be argued against these guidelines as to whether or not there was an abuse of power by the police in using covert or otherwise secret investigations. So did the police act in good faith? Did they have good reason to suspect the criminal activity going on by that specific suspect? Was that uh, specific crime prevalent in the area where the investigation is taking place? Were the secret nature of the investigation necessary to detect that particular criminal activity and what was the nature of the offence and the defendant's circumstances and potential vulnerability. All of those taken into account, the court will be able to decide whether or not it's an abusive process. So all of these arguments can be made and if all of those or a number of those are made out in an argument that it was an abusive process, then potentially the evidence gathered whilst covertly and secretly could potentially be excluded under section 78 of PACE 1984. So comparing that with the police unmarked speed vehicles, it's quite unlikely that the use of unmarked speed vans is going to amount to an abusive process. And so what you might think of as entrapment on the surface is probably quite unlikely. For those that are interested in reading that judgment in more detail, it's obviously a fairly lengthy judgment. Um, I will put a link to that in the description below. 
And if anyone has any more questions about that and would like to discuss that any further, I would invite your questions and comment and I will come back to them in other videos. In the meantime, uh, please do remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow as believe it or not, around 60% of you that watch this channel are not subscribed. But it really does help the channel grow. It helps me to reach a wider audience and help more people to understand law. So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.